Today we're reacting to a video uh, called Why Guru Nana Created a New Religion. You know what I'm saying? As far as I know, I know that it was something between Hindu and Islam. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I, I need to learn more about it. You know what I'm saying? If you guys want to listen to the original video all by yourself without me reacting to it, link will be down below. Um, check it out for yourself. The story of Sikhi begins with Guru Nanak. The year is 1469. It's a confrontation of what we now call Hinduism and Islam in Punjab. Those are the two dominant religions and confrontation in terms of ideas, in terms of even battles, in terms of ideologies and rulers. This is just the beginning of the Mughal dynasty in India, for example. You know, there's a lot of invasion which used to come from Middle East. And for example, at that time, Babur is coming. So that's the time in Punjab in a very, in fact, for your audience, if I say Guru Nanak put a very small village on the world map. Mm. That village now is called Nankana Sahib. It was called Rai Poidi Talwandi. In fact, I visited it several times. Hold on, hold on, Wait. hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Is this temple made out of gold? Is this gold? Nah, this can't be real. I don't think it's gold. Is it? Nah, nah, no way. Ain't no way. Ain't no way. It was called Rai Poidi Talwandi. In fact, I visited it several times. Where is it? It's a, the city is called Nankana Sahib. It is about uh, two hours from Lahore. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So here comes an individual, if I may call it individual to present Guru Nanak. A child is born in that environment. And he puts uh, that small city on the world map because of what? Because of what he brought, the revolutionary ideas he brought and the mandates he created while alive to change the realities, mm -hmm. the, the way he dialogued, the way he asked his question to his math teacher and his Sanskrit teacher and the Kazi of the town and the Brahman of the town. It was not creating a ruckus. It was creating a dialogue because he's pursuing a particular love affair is what I call it. So one of the things I like, for example, is his conversation with his math and Sanskrit teacher. He's asking more why questions. Mm. Today in, in, in education, we call these imaginative questions, not trivial questions, which are more what questions. Like, uh, for example, what if the moon disappears? What will happen to the earth? Is that a good example? That's a what if question, which is another thing. So uh, if I may give an example sure. of that. So he's, there's a ceremony. Let's talk about ceremonies because we all go through ceremonies, whether we like them or not. They're part of the culture. Sometimes they have religious fervors. So there's a ceremony in his house. And uh, it's an initiation ceremony, how you enter into adulthood, you know. There's a Hindu culture, so he's born in the Hindu particular caste. And that ceremony is going on. Instead of saying, I'm not going to go through it, he says, tell me why I should go through it. And why was this not available for my sister who is older than me? So that's what he's doing. He wants people to process. He's not rejecting. This is how most Sikhs presented. And he never said that. He writes about it himself. That's how I know. And when I read that, He's saying, tell me what it will do to me. Why was this not availed to others? Why is exclusively just for me? Like the logic of things. That's what we call it, like a simple logic. Uh, today we may get into Descartian logics, but it's a higher logic. Sometimes it even transcends the mystic logics. Okay. Yes. So it's, it's essentially trying to carry people with it rather than saying rejections and disruptions. I will let you continue the story, sir. <laughs> uh, so Sikhi has some mystical elements. Absolutely. And that's the, including in Guru Nanak's own, you know, so 1469 is when he's born. So that's the South Asia, what's happening at the time. You know, Mughal dynasty is about to get started. Babur has just attacked a town called Sadpur. I visited that. It's very interesting. And Guru Nanak protested against that. So that's a Guru Nanak you may not know. This is the historical Guru Nanak. He's protesting and the fight is between, they both have the same faith. They're both Muslims. But one is Pathan, the local ruler, the Lodi dynasty, and the one is uh, coming from Khorasan, uh, the area uh, sometimes between Iran and Afghanistan, that area we are coming from, right? And Guru Nanak witnesses the whole thing. And he questions it. And this is important just to put it in perspective. It's like a genocidal campaign going on. And mostly the victims are women, mm. what we call today collateral damage. And he lists them. He says, I'm feeling the pain of Hindu women, Thakrani women, the low caste women, and even the Muslim women who are reading the Qurans. Because that's who's getting killed and that's who's getting enslaved and violated, you know, the rapes included. Damn. 
And he, in fact, very powerfully writes, he says, I'm standing on the pile of dead bodies and I'm saying that this is the time to tell the truth, that this must stop. Nobody in South Asia, uh, no Sufi, no religious leader even recorded a protest. Wow. He did, Guru Nanak did, and he was jailed for it. He spent time in jail. Wow. People didn't protest out of fear? Of course. Who's going to take on uh, what we now call the Mughals and the Pathans? Okay. Um, you know, when we speak about Mughal atrocities on the channel, often we're labeled as being right-wing <laughs> because we're targeting Mughals. But this is yeah. so important that the Mughals actually first targeted Muslim brethren. It, so it's, I think those labels create a problem. You know, like, like even the right wing is a label. What we are saying is the religion is same where the fight is going on. Yeah. It's two men who in their power are violating everyone else. Yeah. Um, and Guru Nanak is protesting against what are you doing to what we call rayyat or constituency today, right? The people. You know, we're taught about Babar uh -huh. in our history textbooks as the first Mughal emperor. We're not taught all these things. That's right. Wow. Because this is the part which is, doesn't get recorded. So for, at the same time, just so we don't get caught up in anti-Babar thing, because this is not anti-Babar. Babar comes to see Guru Nanak in jail. Because you see, one of the things in Islam we have to understand, Babar is not a regular guy. He is a scholar as well as a warrior. They are taught with the particular trainings. All the Mughals went through incredible trainings, actually. The Mughal emperors, I should say, Badshah Dirte. So he comes to see Guru Nanak. And he sees that something ain't right here because in Islam, if you come across a spiritual individual, you're, not, you're supposed to eliminate all the wrong things you're doing to them. This is one of the trainings in Islam. And he sees there's something spiritual going on. He's organizing people and they had given him harsh punishment, which are peace right there. He was given time, that's the labor, right? You do in prison, you give labors. So he immediately releases him that they have imprisoned a wrong man. He's saying the right thing, but I don't like it, but he's saying the right things. But mm -hmm. uh, how did he spot that uh, Guru Nanak Ji was? Well, you know, the, the traditions maintain and some secondary texts maintain that Babur came to see him and he heard about it. This peer, you know, in the, in the vocabulary of Islam, that there's a peer who is saying this. This is not just another protester, as we would say today. We stopped at the part where he meets Emperor Babur. And then he, uh, not just that, uh, that actually happened. So we're going back and forth on it. We're yeah. not chronological right now. Best way but to do a okay. podcast. Sure. Um, well, let's talk about, uh, he was traveling the world. Mm. This, this will be interesting. He went to Jagannath Puri. One second, I got, I got to dial you back okay. to the moment he met uh, Babar. Okay. So did Babar release him? Yes, he was released. He okay. was released by Babar. In fact, the folk tradition maintains that he then seeked Guru Nanak's blessing, the ability to be able to rule India. Okay. Wow. What does that mean now? Think about that. I want to Somebody who imprisoned you is now seeking your blessing. So wow. there's an acknowledgement <laughs> happening here yeah. that there are wrongs we do, there are crimes yeah. we commit. Classically, we call them sins, but they're crimes at the end of the day, right? Yeah. You commit against individuals and against yourself. Yeah. So those acknowledgements are happening. The ideas of forgiveness are happening and then working to create better systems is going on as well. Okay. Now I'll let you continue the story. Sure. So part of the story is, which I think will be very relevant today, is he's having dialogues with multiple lifestyles. Because earlier and even today, honestly, you know, everything becomes spiritual and political. We run away from political and sometimes we overly hype the spiritual. Again, these are the mm -hmm. common words. So he's going to those centers and having dialogues. He had dialogues with yogis. He has dial He goes to Jagannath Puri temple where Mrs. Gandhi was not allowed to enter. It's that strict. Wow. I'm just putting a perspective. He goes to Makkah where a non-Muslim cannot enter and he's wow. having conversations with them. What does it take? The genius is just one Damn. element at our levels, but the community... Damn, he went to Mecca? Because I know you can, yeah, that place you cannot enter unless you are converted to Islam. Bro. You cannot enter that place. Holy. Holy. Yeah, this guy must be special. I ain't gonna lie. To enter a place that no one has allowed to go is crazy. It's that strict. I'm just putting a perspective. He goes to Makkah, where a non Muslim cannot enter, and he's having conversations with them. What does it take? The genius is just one element at our levels, but the communication ability, 
the way you present yourself, the way you're able to have a dialogue in disagreements, that's Guru Nanak. That's the real Guru Nanak, which is available to us in Guru Granth Sahib, what he writes himself, which is incredible. So in his travels, he's having these conversations. But it's come, there comes a point, and this is something different about him, which people may not know. He founds a new city. How many spiritual people do that? This is why to call him just spiritual is very problematic. Mm. What would you call him? Why do we need to call him anything? Don't tell He's me. his own model. Okay. He actually is dealing with, in the vocabulary which is written about him, is that he is both Raj and Jogi, Raj Yog. Mm. Raj. This is very interesting. Raj is political. Jog is union. That's the literal meaning, not just Yoga Sutras. Mm. Right? That the meaning of Jog is milap. Like Jog, Yog. Exactly. Similar. Same Yog and Jog is same. It's just a very linguistic variation. Gotcha. right? So that's what he is. Wow. He founds a new city called Kartarpur. Now the question which someone like me, I visited there, I present on it now, I create a whole presentation because I found the old records. Why did he do that? All this is in Pakistan. In current Pakistan. You got to realize... It's all Punjab. Yeah. And half of the mm. Punjab in 47 is called West Punjab now, which is in Pakistan, which is a larger Punjab, by the way. Mm. And the other half, it's like a butterfly's wing. Mm. This may help you. This may help you and your audience understand certain things because it helped me. Actually, the map of Punjab, if you look at the original region of Punjab, looks like a butterfly. And one wing got clipped. Mm. That's part of the problem of Punjab. Wow. I think we were at the part of the story where you spoke about how he established his own city. Hmm, Kartarpur. So let's talk about Kartarpur. What was the purpose? Kartarpur. So Guru Nanak started Kartarpur, right? Why did he have to do it if he's running around everywhere, talking to people, having dialogues, and changing certain minds too? But his job wasn't to change all the minds. One of the things which we discover is that he founded a new city. Because... The people and the state, the policymakers at the time, it was more imperial and kings and chiefs, they wouldn't change the policies. Mm. So he says, let's look at the Ikhwankar paradigm, this oneness with a number one, not vagary of oneness spelled out, and let's practice it here. So in that place in Kartarpur, I mean, the description given is the yogis came to see him, the jannis came to see him, the householders came to see him. But very few stayed there to get mentored. And those very few is the beginning of what we now call six. You know, they came from various cities. Many came to check him out. Many came to have a dialogue with him. But few stayed to get mentored. And it did not include his two sons. Wow. So the, trans, the, 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 the institutionalization of Sikhi, as we may call it, it's really not an organized religion per se. It was more of what trainings are needed in order to create, change the policies in the world. First policy is my relationship with the divine as an outgrowth of that, how to live in the community. So this idea of anti-racism, anti-sexism, these are the words we use today. He was practicing at Kartarpur. Mm. Equality. Equality is still very much a 20th century understanding we carry from a universal suffrage movement from United Nations. Because somebody is mm. still deciding no, that you are equal, we give you this rights now. Mm. Because we think from a legality angle now. Mm. Somebody is still deciding that. What he's saying is, no, you, every human being on this earth is a product of divine gift. So from day one, there, there has to be zero tolerance for racism or sexism. Mm. That he practiced. I like that. Yeah, yeah, I like and that. And six who stayed mm. there, who got mentored in this, and eventually there's a transfer of leadership there. And this is the institution of Sikhi where one individual named Lena became Angad, and we call him Guru Angad, or the second Guru Nanak, who perfected that. And he built that further in another city called Khadur. So the thing I want you to know is that every guru founded a new city. Mm. Mm. What does it take to plan a city? I don't know. Think about that even today. We can't even figure out how to plan our own organization or a block. Yeah. You know, so architecturally, economically, because the policies were not being shifted in other spaces on how to practice this oneness. This is a huge difference between Guru Nanak's system, that it is not just personal, it has a very large element of community, and not just community in idea as a utopian idea, but a lived realities. Mm. That's why you see the organization of Sikh faith and Sikh people in such organized way, because it got mandated by Guru Nanak himself. Wow. Mm. 
to draw out some more context from the time uh historical political context so the mughals had like started establishing themselves this was where babar and sher shah and mm-hmm. all that was going on in the delhi area yeah i'm assuming the rajasthan had all the rajput kings yeah. at a uh, war with each other this is what i have understood from history some had war some in alliances depends on their al- allegiance yes yeah uh and possibly even the rest of india kind of had that kind of a scenario where it's either the mughals or these little dynasties kind of up against each other or in alliance with each other mm-hmm. and whenever you refer to policies in what you're talking about guru nanak's time you're talking about these kings so the way the system works right so the emperor doesn't own all the land right kings report to the emperor and chiefs report mm. to the kings so certain things badshah your word ha huh? yeah uh, you are a ruler of a particular area that's emperor but under you are kings under kings are the chieftains so when i'm referring to policy this the areas they lived in okay. whatever the local domain was they decided the policies okay and policies were heavily decided by religious momentum of the past with religious fervors they still are very political because policy making is political they just need endorsement of the religious authorities okay mm. just like today even in america you know why do they always have a reverend there billy graham worked with seven presidents in america mm. regardless of whether they were republicans or democrats it's true globally This is why the spirituals so called and politicians so called they're always conspiring with each other to control masses mm. by the way gurunanak mm. wrote this mm. I actually want to mention this explicitly wow. he says people who are just peers and people who are just meers meer is a short of amir the political head it's a persian word both are persian words and he wrote this he like people who are just doing one or the other they actually work with each other to wow. control the masses and that's wow. the problem and this is why six have a phrase called meeri peeri which means become equally spiritual and equally political so mm-hmm. you're aware of the both mm. wow the equivalent of like a raj rishi like that something the... like that which uh, earlier i said was wow. a raj yoga idea mm. yeah. okay yeah. uh now i will let you expand on uh guru nanak dev ji's kind of later life what was happening in kartarpur Kartarpur he's farming okay Kartarpur he's training what we today call next in line what we call our exit plans oh yeah. like as in succession succession planning he is also creating institutionalizations of what we're saying what is that we believe in so he wrote those because you see in indologies as well as everywhere in the world people think everything is biological he's very aware of that so he's making sure his thought and what he believes in his experience uh gets recorded and so his kids and their descendants do not dilute it because they didn't get the guruship his both of his sons didn't get guruship what were they up to against him they started alternative religions if you ask me really wow. yeah like udasi order is one of his sons in fact there's a great lesson in there even then and this is what he's teaching through his life that they may not agree with him there's no condemnation mm. but it's such a clarity is there they are not the right next in line to continue the sect thought mm. so that's the level of clarity and love at the same time so if you enjoyed this video make wow. sure you check out this playlist for more videos wow yo bro i ain't gonna lie man I'm so interested in learning things like I want to know so I just want to know the truth. I want to know the meaning of everything. And this this is amazing, bro. This dude, this Guru Nanak man. Wow. Wise man, bro.